All right, folks, welcome to Arduino for Beginners. This is Arduino 101. All right, so let's get into the sensors. We looked at an LED in the last one. We've seen a little bit about the laser. Today, let's take a look at the three-color LED. Now, these come in various types as well. I can show you a couple of different kinds. And in this case, it is a simple LED like last time, except it has four poles. Oh, I better get in camera there instead of two. So we're not actually going to be using that one. We're going to be using this one here because this is pre-resistored as well, and it is ready to plug directly into the Uno. This is an actual Uno sensor that comes in the kit that you can get at the description link down below. I definitely recommend checking out Banggood because you can get a ton of sensors super cheap, and they actually ship at a decent rate as far as speed goes, depending on whether or not you select the U.S. warehouse or accidentally hit China. Even at that rate, uh, overseas shipping doesn't take too long and you get a much cheaper part of the exact same item. So uh, definitely check out that link. What we're gonna do is we're gonna jump right over here and we are gonna plug this directly into the Uno. And before we do that, I should mention in most cases when plugging and unplugging things into this device, you really don't wanna have it powered on. So even though you were really not gonna hurt anything using the last couple examples that we did, we're gonna go ahead and remove the power there. And then we are gonna go ahead and plug it in. And what we are gonna do is we are going to find the pins that are clearly labeled on here, you can see. They are RGB and negative. So we are going to take the negative pin here and we're going to plug that in to a ground terminal. There's one of those right here. So now our circuit is grounded. The other three we are going to take and we are going to plug into three of the digital pins. We can pick any three. We're going to be typing them out in code here in a minute. We are just going to pick 11, 10, and 9 because they're all in order and they're all right here. The nice thing about the Arduino boards is not only are the numbers listed on the board itself, but they're listed on the side of the pegs as well. So they're pretty easy to find and to see. So now we have our LED plugged in. We can get rid of the breadboard. We, we're not really using that. If I were to plug in this other LED, I would use that, but I would also need to plug in three resistors and get a lot more stuff going on. So this is gonna work just fine. We're gonna jump over to writing our first program for this. And what you need to do is open up Arduino and go to File and then New. And that will open up a new sketch. Now, just so you know, sometimes when you have multiple instances of Arduino open, if they are both trying to talk to COM9, if COM9 is selected in both of them or whatever COM your board's hooked up to, um, and it's not showing up because my board's not hooked up, but you, you really only want one instance open at a time, or sometimes it'll block you from communicating with the board because the other instance is trying to communicate with it as well. So we'll go ahead and pop this open here. We've got some pretty simple coding to do, and we're going to start it off by getting our pins. Now, um, let's see. The pins are clearly labeled, so blue, red, green, actually not bad. So blue is 9, red is 10, green is 11. So let's do int green equals 11, and int blue equals 9 and int red equals 10. Okay, so there we've called the pins. Those are the pins that we plugged into. That's basically what we're going to need to do what we need to do. So we're going to go ahead and write over this. And what we need to do is set the mode of these pins. And we're going to set them as output. So um, and the reason I did that that way is because I need three of these exact same things. Then we need to go in here and do red, green, blue. All right, so it's telling all those pins to be outputs. Then we're going to go into our loop. And I think what we're going to do here 
is going to be a pretty simple. So let's call a method in here and then put a delay in there. And we'll do change color. And let's say 180 by 180 by 180. And close. Um, and since we don't actually have that yet, we're going to have to create it. So this is creating a method. Um, we're going to call it void change color and it's going to take in three integers so int r value int green value int blue value we need to make sure that we use the right syntax and spell everything right because we're calling this method and these are the numbers we're passing in these are our values okay so uh, when this happens, we need to do a analog write, just as you saw in the last code that we did. And this takes two parameters. The first parameter is going to be the red pin, and the second parameter is going to be the red value. Now, we need to write to all three of our pins, so we're going to copy this three times and change these respectively. So, green, blue. Okay, so right now we're calling change color, and it should change the color of what we need um, to whatever this value is here. It's going to combine those values, and it shouldn't do anything beyond that. But let's put a delay in here just in case. And then we can go ahead and now that we've had this hooked up actually and everything's plugged in, we can actually go ahead and plug it back in. And you can see we got nothing. Let's push this sketch and see what happens. We'll find out what color 180, 180, 180 is. And then we'll play around with this code here a little bit more. Uh, looks like a pretty bright uh, whitish blue color. I don't know if you can see that very well from, from up there. It is very bright. Let's try something different. Let's go... Um, second value is our green value. Let's do 0, 250, 0. And hit upload. So the light should turn green now in theory. And there it is. Yeah, it's pretty green. A little bit on the cyan side of things. Uh, let's see what else we can do with this. So what if we have... Uh, eval equals zero, int rval equals zero, int eval equals zero. Um, we'll change these to rval, gval, and bval. And then we'll do something to those and make them change. So, um, Let's see. Gval is less than 255. Now 255 is maxed out. Gval plus equals 3. Else. Gval equals zero. So basically this is saying if the green value is less than 255, which it is, it's going to be zero. Add three to it. So it's going to keep adding three until it hits 255. Once it's over 255, it'll hit this else case, and then it'll set it back to zero, and it'll just loop through again. So to make it interesting, let's do this with the other two as well. Except I think we'll do this one in reverse. So greater than zero and minus 
and this will be the red value. Um, and remember, it's going to change this number every time it loops through here. So this is going to be blue value. And we'll have that change by 5. And then we need to go set the R value to 255 to begin with. Okay, so now this should basically randomly change the color every second. So let's see what happens when we upload our sketch here. Oh, it looks like we have an error. There it is. Expected. So I didn't put a semicolon here to close this one. And that means I missed it on the other two as well. Let's try that again. And it compiled, so it's uploading. And you can see the color slowly shifting. So let's get a little bit better look at that. Uh, it's still in the very, very pink spectrum, shifting to white. Let's see if we can make this happen a little faster. Let's change this delay. And we'll just make this thing go bonkers. There you go. You can see it strobing different colors. So pretty cool effect. Uh, pretty simple way to use this sensor. And that's basically going to be it for this simple tutorial. You can modify this code in a million different ways to do what you want to do with this sensor. But this should get you going and get you started on using it with your Arduino. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit... 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link, check out our Patreon link, leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.